Hey, how's it going? Thanks for clicking on the video. My name is Leonard Wilkes. I'm an independent filmmaker. Today, I wanted to share some advanced tips and techniques for chroma keying in After Effects. I shot an entirely green screen music video last summer, and that forced me to learn way more than I ever uh, needed to about green screen, and I thought I would share it with you. So uh, the shot that I'm going to cover is this one that you're seeing on screen here. Here's the original shot. So this is kind of best case scenario. This was shot on a red, in raw, uncompressed, like you couldn't ask for better footage. This is still difficult to key, and so that's kind of what I'm going to be covering today uh, in this tutorial here. Now, I understand, and I always get frustrated when I go to a green screens tutorial, and I'm like, yeah, sure, you can key ideal footage, but what about problematic footage? I actually ended up creating an entire two and a half hour green screen course showing you how to make something like this keyable inside DaVinci Resolve's Fusion tab. This is very much a green screen no-no, fine hair detail, especially in front of this foldy off-colored cloth. There's a much more advanced keyer in Resolve, so I've got a link in the description if you want to check out that full course uh, on my Gumroad page. But short of that, even the most ideal scenario footage isn't going to give you the best results right out of the can. So there's a lot that you can do to improve keys like this right within After Effects. So let's get started with that. Just a real quick overview of what we're going to actually try and do here. Most people, when they sit down to do a key in After Effects, are going to try and get everything to work within one instance of key light. It is a really complicated process that requires several steps and most of the tools that you're gonna find in any software to help you deal with this, try to oversimplify it. They try to let you do everything in one single layer and effect and to a degree, yes, you can do that. And especially for things where you're not really looking at major edge details, you can get away with it. But if you're looking for that super pro level key, like you see in the Avengers movies or whatever the big blockbusters, if you want it to not be apparent that you shot something on a green screen, you really have to take things step by step. And the two biggest steps, uh, and we're going to be covering all of this in detail, you first have to generate your alpha layer, which everyone's more familiar with, which is getting that black and white mat that says, hey, everything that's green here should be transparent transparent should be completely see-through. Everything that's not green, in other words, her, should be completely opaque. In other words, you can't see through it. And then along the hairline and the edge of the shoulders, just around the edges, there should be semi-transparent details. So easier said than done. Really, it's two pieces of the puzzle. Really, you're creating that alpha mat, and then you're also recoloring your plate image so that these green pixels are matched with the foreground color so that when you apply that alpha, think of it as a cookie cutter, to your green screen, then you are applying that cookie cutter over pixels that all match. So here's what I mean by that. Let's call this one alpha, and then we'll duplicate it and call this chroma. Let's leave the chrominance alone for a second. I'm gonna put that below and turn it off. So you wanna pick a couple of, of points. So like this is a nice before she moves, uh, Let's call that number one, drag out a marker there. And then right here, we got a lot of motion blur on the arms there. And then we've got this hair detail right here. So that's probably another good frame to be looking at. Okay. When a keyer is pulling a key, it's actually doing math between the red, the green, and the blue channels. And if I click between those really quickly, you can kind of see, you know, what it might be doing in terms of, you know, those two seem like they're very contrasty towards each other. And if you did some math between those three layers, you could probably figure out what's green and what's not. And actually, if you look here on the, the scopes down here, you can actually see that the green layer is very much separated from the blue and the red. So what the computer is doing is using the math between those three channels to determine what should be removed and become transparent and what should stay solid. So let's do what we normally do uh, to get a good key. We're going to throw a key light on there. And then, of course, you would do your screen mat, uh, clip black, clip white, all that. So let's pretend like this is a nice, soft, edge detailed alpha and we're, we're good, right? Using this track mat feature here, whatever is the layer above what you choose in your drop down menu here is going to be treated as the alpha layer. If you don't see this, by the way, you may just need to toggle this little clip down here to be able to see that. So really quickly, let's turn this off and let's look back at this. Let's not go in the alpha mode. Let's go regular RGB. So this is an untouched, just another copy of our plate, right? And then we have our alpha up here, which is confusing because it's trying to do all the chrominance and the same thing. So if I just throw a fill effect on this alpha layer, what that's gonna do is take the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel and just fill it with a color. So let's fill it with white. So that looks like an alpha mat and we can understand what we're dealing with here. So now we've got this traveling alpha mat that goes with her, right? And that's what you want to think of as the cookie cutter, that alpha. And it is going to cookie cut whatever we put below it, this chrominance. So let's use that as an alpha mat. Cool. So now you're seeing what's happening here is we're applying that cookie cutter and it is cookie cutting the pixels beneath it. Now those pixels, because we haven't done anything to this base layer here, if I turn that off, it's just our regular plate. You can see how the chrominance is actually affecting our edges here. 
So in an instance like this, a lot of times people are going to go back up to their key light and say, well, I don't want to see this stuff, so I should just shrink this down a little bit. And cool, now that'll get rid of it. It does, uh, to a degree, get rid of that. But what it also does is get rid of all the edge detail that you are trying to maintain, right? So instead, put that back to zero. Instead, what you would want to do, and let's go to a hero frame, fit this in here. So let me take a quick screenshot here of what this looks like now. And then turn this off for a second so we can see what we're about to do. I'm actually just going to use a uh, Lumetri color uh, correction, Lumetri color, using the curves. And if we go to hue versus hue, and I select the green hue, now this is going to allow me to recolor those green pixels. So obviously we don't need this to be a blue screen. If we're doing this whole cookie cutter thing, we want these green pixels to be indistinguishable from their foreground counterpart. So we want it to be generally peach to deal with uh, any section here that touches her skin or the dress. And then we'll probably need a little brown and or red for her hair, right? So let's do a quick color correction on that. Get this closer to her skin tone and we'll make that a little bit softer so that we are getting some of this effect in the skin tones and then maybe bring this up just a little bit more because we want that to be closer to skin tones right in there cool so now those things are pretty close right much like the alpha we're going to do multiple chromas you know this worked pretty well for the skin tone but we'll probably have to do a duplicate of this and call this like hair chroma and then rather than color correcting it to peach we'll color correct it a little further to be even closer to maybe that hair color and then make it a little bit darker to kind of match closer to what we're dealing with with her hair, right? And then we would mask that out. All this is going to be covered. I just want to kind of give you a brief overview of essentially what we're going for here so that you understand the process as we get into it step by step. Cool. So now we have this recolored chroma. We would combine both of these things with pre-compose. Chroma. We have our chroma. We have our alpha. And when we combine the two of those using the alpha matte feature, now, look at the difference. If we go back to what it looked like when we had the green, and now here. Obviously, this is the wrong color, and I did that really fast, but this is the basic idea that we're going for, which is you need to color correct your plate and then extract the alpha and combine the two things together. So anyways, that is a quick overview of the essential steps that we're going to be doing in this tutorial, but now let's dig into the details. So let's do a whole new instance. There we go, right? We're going to throw a key light on there. We're going to pick a darkish shade of green, Let's hop on over to our alpha layer so that we can see how much noise we need to get rid of. One thing that I like to do is once you've got a good green selection, if you mess around with the blue and the red sliders, you can get kind of a nice threshold where it's like, I'm trying to keep the detail of the hair. I don't want to introduce too much noise over here or have any noise for that matter, but I'm just getting this right on the level to where beyond that, you're starting to get noise. This I'll take care of in another pass, but near the hair, I think we're pretty good there. Okay, you may be aware that you can combine keys because obviously we're getting kind of the best result there for the hair, but obviously we're leaving this here and we don't want to crunch it too much and lose all of that detail so the cool thing is you can split them up right so let's do a real quick let's call this a uh, hair and we'll duplicate and call this body put body down here uh, i'm just going to do a quick garbage mat and this is going to just separate the hair from the body right and let's keyframe that really quickly you can be a lot more detailed than i'm going to be with this but basically what we're going for here is we've got two separate keys one that's perfect for the hair and then one that's going to be better for the body and we're just going to combine the two of them that's one of the tricks that you may or may not have already heard and get the best of both worlds and that works well for a shot like this where it's very simple move and the green screen's relatively even so what i'm going to do i'm going to take this mask here i'm going to copy it since this is the body we want to subtract this here and then for the hair if i put that mask on there now it's add add subtract great right except uh oh what's this without going into crazy detail what's happening here is because those alphas are literally one pixel on top of each other one for one that's what's causing this issue if you want to fix the issue make sure you have this guy selected here take your top layer and change the blend mode to alpha add that will get rid of that line and even if you take these and you add a feather of let's say 15 pixels to that one and then 15 pixels to that one as long as you're in the alpha add uh, mode you're good to go normally it would look like that and then when you're in the alpha add it behaves how it should in that scenario cool i'm leaving these holes on the inside intentionally i'm going for a soft mat here and then we're gonna once we get this perfect we're going to uh duplicate it and use it as an inner mask kind of shrink it inward um, which again, kind of a common thing to do. Promise there's there's more coming that you haven't heard before. So let's deal with this body really quickly. So we want to get rid of some of that kind of stuff. Let's let's go over here to 
to this part because I want to make sure we get all of that out of there. Honestly, I think just dragging this down to a darker area is probably going to give us what we want. I don't want to introduce too much more into that dress there, but that looks pretty good. Let's check that earlier. I don't see any, any speckles on that side or on this side. Cool. So let's call this our soft layer. Good to go on that one. Um, I'm actually going to pre-compose these together. One of the things we can do now that we have this nice soft mat is create a crunchier yet smaller version of this exact same thing on the inside that will cover up all of these holes. And then we just worry about the transition between the two of them. So let's duplicate this soft mat layer. Now, one thing you might think, hey, what if I just keep going? Eventually it will fill up those holes, but if you notice, it's not really helping you on the edges. So that's not the best idea in the world. So what we're gonna do is let's call this soft mat let's call it a hard mat. You can also call these edge and core mats. The hard mat would be the core and the soft mat would be the edge. So let's just deal with this one for a second. Right now they're the exact same thing, but what we're going to do is harden up the hard mat. Now, yes, we could go back in and individually mess with the screen gain controls on all that, but another thing that you can do, which is a bit easier, is to throw a levels effect on there. And rather than messing with the red, green, or blue channels, we will adjust the alpha, right? So if we take that high end and just crunch this down until we don't have any more holes, dial that back and see if we can't fill, there we go, fill in that hole. So we want all this transparent detail, but as soon as it gets to a 1.0 in the alpha, zero being transparent, the decimals in between being the varying levels of semi-transparency and one being fully opaque. Once we get here, we want it to stay full inside because there should be no holes, right? But problem is, look at these semi-transparent areas. They get covered up by this hard mat. Now, we kind of want that when it comes to the skin, but not for the hair. So how do we get the best of both worlds? Well, let's start with uh, using a simple choker. And what the simple choker is going to do, let me turn off the layer below so you get a full idea of what's happening here, is it's either going to bring it out or in. Now, if you go to too many of the extremes, see, this is obviously not retaining that sharpness. So you want to keep this like within, you know, five to 10. So what we're going to do is get this just inside the edge of the skin. Um, so see how if we keep going, we're revealing a lot of the semi-transparency. We want this to be just inside so that we can blur it a little bit and not go over. We never want to go over. We want that edge to always be bleeding on the outside so that it maintains those nice, soft, fuzzy edge details because that's what's going to sell this is nice, soft, fuzzy edge detail. So this might be a little much. Let's let's not go further than like maybe a five. You just want to be right on the inside there, which is going to cover up most of these things. Now, obviously, uh, the fall off between them is a little jarring. So your first thought might be, well, maybe I just gosh and blur it, which uh, is a good idea because this hard line, here, let me turn off the soft man on the edge. So this hard line, you can soften it up by doing the gosh and blur, right? So now it might fade nicely into that bottom layer. And in fact, it does. You could just leave it like this. The problem that this is going to introduce is when you start to have things like here, when her arm kind of opens up. In the soft mat, you can see all of this kind of semi-transparent detail right here, especially right here where things get very close to each other. This looks correct. Now, when we apply our hard mat, you can see the obvious problems with something like this, right? So we want a little bit more of an even fall off than even just that, right? So the blurring is helping, but it's also adding to and covering up some other areas that we would rather have left opaque. So in other words, see all this black here that should be completely see-through? When we get to the core mat, we're covering a lot of it up and there is no gradual fall off, right? Right now, this this layer can blur outside of that original boundary box if it wants to, right? If we keep going with this, eventually it will go outside of what our original plate is. So that you're going to get this halo, especially in sharp corners here under the arms. So you really don't want that per se, but it is nice to get some softness so that it doesn't just seem like it rolls off in one pixel. In other words, let's get rid of this gosh and blur here for a second. This is too obvious. Like we can see the transition between these two things and it's, it's, it's not great. It's not ideal. I want to talk talk about track mats. We kind of briefly touched on this in the intro. You can use any layer as an alpha mat for the layer below it. So if we want to blur this, but we want to make sure that we don't go outside of this bounding box that we've already set, we can actually use this hard mat as a mat for itself, if that makes any sense. So right now we're saying that anything that's below this, we want this to be affected by this map. So in other words, affect everything in the white, don't affect anything in the black. So if we duplicate this layer, and instead of calling it the hard mat, this is going to be the, let's call it the boundary for the hard mat. So hard mat, I probably spelled boundary wrong. So right now, these two things are identical. They're the same thing, right? But if I throw this Gaussian blur that we had talked about on, on here, 
And let's crank it up to something ridiculous, something that we know is going to affect our edges, right? So clearly, this is no longer going to have that sharp edge detail. And if we apply the thing underneath, we're going way over into the black, right? But if we limit this hard mat by itself, essentially, we're saying blur it, but only on where there's white. So let's go back to this and let's make this hard mat our alpha layer. Now you can see the blur happens inward, just not outward. So when we put the soft mat on the inside, now you're getting kind of a nice fall off. All right. So that's a little crazy. We don't actually want that to be that blurry. Really, we probably want this to be like, I don't know, like eight pixels. Just something with some nice fall off. Eh, maybe a little bit more, something like that, right? Uh, but then we have to deal with the harshness of this line. So let's look at how much we've come in on the simple choker. We came in five pixels on the simple choker with our mat here. Since we want this to not be quite so sharp, I think we can throw a Gaussian blur on here and just make sure that we don't go above five pixels. So now we have a nicer, softer edge that is defining our hard mat here. So this is what we're looking at, our actual hard mat, and then this is the mask for the hard mat that we've applied this Gaussian blur to. So without that Gaussian blur on the boundary layer, we have still this harsh line. If we apply the Gaussian blur at only five pixels, now we have this nice softer edge, which if we put the soft mat underneath, now we're not going over. We have a nice easy fall off there and we're also maintaining that detail. Cool, so now we have kind of a nice fall off. Now we are still going to have to deal with the inevitable, which is there are some areas where this trick just doesn't quite work. Like we've got it working nice for the edges because your skin tone's only gonna be a couple of pixels off from that. But we know from experience that there's a lot more semi-transparency in this soft mat here that we wanna maintain. So really at this point, we've automated as much as we could. Now we're gonna have to go in and mask out the areas where we need extra detail. In other words, if we know we need the extra detail here, I will go to the hard mat, I will click on my pen tool, and I will start to mask out the areas that we still want semi-transparency in. And then we'll animate those masks. And if we make that, instead of add, we're gonna do subtract. So actually, let's leave this at none, right? So right now, we have our soft layer, we have our hard mat that works pretty well, except for the areas that we have problems. So then we take that hard mat and we subtract the area that we don't want that detail in. Now what's cool about that is you're also maintaining that nice soft edge blur that we've already defined. So that's really cool, that's nice. With that, once you reveal the edge details underneath, now you've got the best of both worlds. You've got a nice solid interior. You can have full customization over where you need more semi-transparency, probably along the edges of the hair, probably underneath the uh, armpit areas. And now you have total control. So we're just gonna cut away and cut into the areas that need more detail. And I promise you, it really is worth the extra time that you're going to do it. So let me really quickly perform all of that and I'll see you on the other side. So now we have the best of both worlds. So let's actually pre-compose these together. Pre-compose Alf. Cool. So now we have our alpha. Let's go back to the project and drop another green screen plate in. So obviously you're understanding what's happening there. Now, if we just go ahead and apply that alpha using the track mat, and again, track mat is the layer above whatever alpha is contained here will be used as the alpha for its immediate adjacent layer. So at this point, obviously we haven't done any despill because we cut that out of the process. And you could very easily just add an advanced spill suppressor. And that honestly looks pretty good, right? If we turn off the alpha, really what it's doing is using the... Um, yeah, let's turn it off. The separation between these guys, it's using math to determine when the green goes too far above these two, what should happen to it. And that's how spill is being calculated here. Now, if you notice how drastically all of the greens, not just the green screen itself, in terms of levels, how bright it is, like we should only be adjusting color. But notice when we do the spill suppressor, it's actually bringing that green all the way down here. And the same for the greens of uh, her skin tones, right? It's really bringing all those greens down. Now, it needs to because obviously there shouldn't be that much green present, but this is kind of disingenuous in terms of its luminance values. It wasn't actually this dark. It became this dark when you removed some of those green pixels using some of that channel math, and it's been replaced with more blue or red pixels from those other two maps. So um, that's why they give you this ultra method here. Now, again, if I turn this on and off, watch the greens here. This, this guy will still stabilize, but look at the levels of the greens elsewhere. They don't shift as much. You don't get as much contamination in the luminance levels. So all of this is really good, right? And once we apply
apply the alpha, you start to understand, oh, well, I'm starting to see you know, the outline here, especially when there's motion blur, this looks a little odd, right? So maybe I just do go back, even if I don't like it as much, go back to that, because that looks good. Well, the problem is, sure, it looks good over this background, but if you throw the actual background behind it, and it'll be more apparent if I bring this a little bit lower and a little bit more over. So I'm sure you've run into this in the past where you're getting these mixed pixels, because all the alpha is doing is taking this original green screen plate, let's turn off that effect. So it's taking this and it's just remapping these pixels, these green values. And it's doing it, you know, using its algorithm and you have some control over it here and there. But for the most part, it's, you know, these sliders can only do so much. So one of the other things that you can do is actually custom color correct your plate. So let's get rid of this background. I don't want that as a distraction right now. And I'm going to remove this advanced spill suppressor because again, I don't think we need it. What I'm going to do is actually use Lumetri because if you use the curves, the versus curves, you get hue versus saturation, hue versus hue is the big one we're going to use here. So let's go back to good hero frame, right? So what I want to do is I know skin tones live here and I, obviously it's a green screen. So I want to make sure we capture all the greens. I'm going to take the green slider and with the hue versus hue, you can actually push it closer to her skin tone. You can actually make the entire screen closer to her skin tone. So that's going to be helpful especially since she's wearing a skin tone colored dress. Most of these green pixels when they get cookie cuttered by this alpha are correct now. So I've already done my color correction really quickly, my advanced spill suppression, and I have control over it. You know, if I needed to be a little more or a little less, I can do that. If I need to, you know, bring the actual skin tones and get a little bit of the green out of there, I have a lot of control. Now, one of the things that this is going to do is introduce some artifacts. You will especially notice this if we turn off the track mat, you can see what's going on here. We're getting weird banding effects right here. I'm not 100% sure why Lumetri is doing it exactly that. There are other color correctors in uh, different software that won't necessarily create these issues. They're easy enough to fix. So uh, let's figure that out really quickly. Even before messing around with the Lumetri panel, I wanna kind of show you the idea of what we're, we're going for here. So again, if I apply the alpha mat here, we've got the green halo that everyone's familiar with. And that's because we haven't done any D-spool, right? So let's turn that off for a second. Let's go full screen. So one of the cool things that you can do is use blending modes to recolor the edge pixels, especially where you're getting those those uh, problem areas. So to kind of show you what I mean, if I actually just go, let's go to our problem frame here where we're going to have some issues. And again, alpha mat. But what if I actually went into the plate, double clicked it, pulled up my brush tool, and rather than normal, if I switch this blending mode down all the way down here to color, and then I alt click to pick a skin tone color and start painting with that, and actually I would probably want to get a little bit closer to exactly what the skin tone is there, do the same with the hair here, and just kind of recolor and retarget those pixels to be closer to what they should be for the foreground pixels. Same with the red and this guy here. Now, luminance is a whole other thing, and I would use a multiply brush for that. Really, we're not going to be using brushes. We're going to be using shape masks wherever we can, but check out how much better this looks. We gotta go back up to a comp. That is much more appealing than what we had previously, which was, let me throw this plate in here, set it to alpha. So let's take a quick snapshot of that and let's look at the before and after. So you can see just by getting the color right, a lot of people think once you have this perfect alpha that you need to eat away at it when you have see-through issues like this. Like, how do I get rid of this halo while I eat it onto the alpha mat? No, no, no. You're gonna wanna color correct your base. Let's not do it that way. Let's do it with shapes. Let's turn this guy on, no track mat. Go back to our beginning frame, fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come over here to my ellipse tool, and then for the fill color, I'm just gonna pick a skin tone and create a shape. And then this will be arms. So let's do size, or excuse me, scale. That's unlocked. So really we wanna get this close down here. We want this to cover her arm. I'm gonna throw a Gaussian blur on here because I don't want this to be nice and even. I want this to be spread out quite a bit. Cool. So I'm going to do the same thing using the color mode. See, now I'm already doing my color correction. Now, again, I forgot I had that Lumetri on here. So L-U-M-E, Lumetri, curves, hue versus hue. Let's put a skin tone marker there, bring the blue back down to here. Green's going to go up here and skin tones right about there. Cool. So again, yes, we're gonna be doing some keyframes, but it's really, really, really not that big of a deal to do a couple of keyframes in the long run here. Uh, let me also throw an HS, HSL, uh, HLS, new saturation lightness, just so that I have some key frameable, adjustable parameters for this so I can kind of really fine tune what I'm looking for with this. 
Anyways, uh, so let's keyframe this bad boy. And in fact, I'm also going to rotation scale. Cool. All right, let's go. <laughs> Especially here, I know we're gonna need to do uh, the hair. Uh, for that one, I might actually just draw a shape. The anchor point with these shape layers are a little more difficult to deal with. Uh, I'm actually just going to correct the anchor point and reset it back to where it should be because I don't wanna deal with that later. And now I can still use my size, scale, and rotation bits for all of this. And I might even put that anchor point a little more to the side. So, so now if I mess with the scale, like the width of the scale or the height, I'm doing the whole shape like that. And I may have to go in and actually adjust those those pins, but I'm gonna try to not have to do that. So uh, let's do that. Okay, here's a good example where her head, her red hair is kind of down here and not up into this. So it's gonna be important to have your HLS on this one for sure. Oops, not zone, color balance, thank you. Bring this back a little bit. I mark that and then I think by this point we should be back up to probably our full opacity so it'll just slowly lose opacity as it gets over there but it looks like it's staying relatively where it should for this This looks pretty good. Now I do know again from experience that this top is a little bright. Uh, so actually underneath these two, I'm gonna create one more little garbage layer for the hair because I know the hair in general just needs to be a little darker. So I'm gonna create, so I do want this darken to apply before those two reds. And so I need it to be underneath the red because I'm not gonna use color, I'm actually going to use multiply. Cool. And then I'm gonna use the opacity here to drive that darkness there. Um, one thing, again, let's center this up and I think my anchor point needs to be realigned. So let's do that. All right, so now we've got all these traveling mats. And yes, that was a bit to do, but you can kind of understand the science of what's happening here in terms of if you apply the cookie cutter alpha on top of that with all of the correct colors, pre-compose that. And if we apply the alpha, now we've got kind of the best of all worlds going on here. So if we put that over our background, now we're really in good shape. Um, now there are a couple of other compositing things that I would still do to this. Obviously I'd throw uh, you know a blur on the background, like a camera lens blur. And actually that 5% is pretty good. Um, another thing that tends to give away uh, green screen is if you look at actual footage of people in front of real backgrounds, it takes three or four pixels of fall off because uh, you're never fully in focus on exactly that edge there. You're usually in focus on their face and there's a little bit of fall off. So these two need to be pre-composed. We're going to call this Leah because that's the uh, dancer's name. So now that this is pre-composed, now on top of this, I can put my... Um, edge blur. And the edge blur is not applying a blur all to everything, literally just the edge pixels. And in fact, you can tell how many of them there should be. So let's just do three pixels. And I think that's probably too much. Two is probably because like, look at the difference of what we're doing here. You know, it's very, very, very subtle, but it ties the footage back together. Like that looks more like a real picture. Now, the other thing is because we filmed this at a pretty high shutter speed, it's a little bit jittery. We did that so that we didn't get a lot of motion blur, but it is nice to put that back with say a uh, pixel motion blur. And obviously it's going to start out at probably way too extreme. Um, like just for instance, when we're, this is the most motion that we have. That's obviously way, 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 way too much. So maybe we put this down to like a 90 degree shutter or maybe even a 45. Uh, that to me feels a little more natural. And that just adds a little bit more of that natural motion blur back to the image so that when it's mixing with those background pixels, it looks more authentic. Light wrap is another thing where edge pixels, especially near highlights are going to kind of bloom over the edge. Red Giant actually makes a really good compositing uh, script called Supercomp, and it has a lot of streamlined built-in effects. 
Here's that edge blend that I was telling you about. You can see there, the blur is only being applied exactly right at the edge by how many pixels you uh, determine. So we already did that, so I'm gonna get that out of there. But light wrap is a great thing. Uh, let's zoom in over here so you can see it. And in fact, I'll turn it up the amount up to 50% so you can really see what's going on. That's what light wrap is right there. It's taking blurred pixels from the background and softly wrapping it around your subject. Now, this tends to happen a little more, uh, most pronounced near brighter things like this, this is really gonna sell. Sometimes I'll actually put two light wraps. I'll put a standard one that just brings a little bit of the color in around the edge to kind of marry this all together. And then I'll throw one on that's limited by the highlights. So again, this one is not really throwing it anywhere but the highlights. And then if you want it to be, you know, a little bit bigger, you know, encroaching on a little more, actually, I think it should probably be smaller and more intense. So that's gonna tie that in much better. And if we go ahead and render this out, I'm gonna do it at half. You can see how much better all of this kind of marries together, especially when she kind of goes over the brighter areas of that. And especially when she hits right, yeah, right in there. That's that's how light behaves in a, in a lamp. Okay, so this is all fine and dandy, right? But if we were gonna do something more complex, like one of those other shots that I showed you, this gimbal shot, for instance, it would be a pain in the butt even if the camera wasn't moving, right? You'd have to mask out all of these uh, individual trackers, put a key light that affects that particular shade of green, put a key light to get rid of this bright green. You need one for the medium green, probably one for this area down here, one for down here, one for over here, these folds. Everything would be a nightmare, right? Well, there's actually a different way to key altogether. You don't have to necessarily just use the channels. You can also do a difference mat. At the end of this plate, she walks all the way off, right? So let's duplicate this. Time freeze frame. So this whole thing is going to stay where it is now. This is our clean plate. Let's drop that beneath this guy here. If I set this to, this is actually more of a technical mode, this difference mode, right? If you've ever used the difference mode in Photoshop, uh, it's really helpful for aligning layers that are supposed to be pixel for pixel exact. And basically what happens is if it is exactly a pixel match, it will show up black. It won't show up at all and will only show where there is a difference. So it's showing me that all of these side pixels, those are all great. The difference is in her. Kind of see how the difference is working? So you can use that for a keyer, in fact. So let me reset our position here. Let's not use difference like this. Let's use it as normal. So if you have a clean plate, in other words, a map saying, at this pixel, use this screen, at this pixel, use this screen, at this pixel, use this screen, over here, use this screen. So put the clean plate down there. We're going to apply the difference mat effect. So we want it to use the clean plate as the layer. So you can actually get a decent hard mat just by using the difference. Now, other software has way more powerful difference mats. And actually that's what my super in-depth tutorial is all about. So DaVinci Resolve has uh, a compositor built into it called Fusion. And within Fusion, they have a keyer called the Delta Keyer, which is like this, but on steroids. It is the best of key light and this difference mat technology all built in. And what's really cool about that, it also comes with a clean plate generator that will create a clean plate for you when you don't have one. Rather than do a key on your actual green screen, it will take those colors and do a reverse key. In other words, it'll cut her out and leave a hole where her body is. And then it will smear those edge pixels inward to fill in that hole with adjacent green screen. So it will actually generate its own clean plate for you. So when you feed it back into this, now it knows this screen here, this screen here, this screen at this pixel, this screen at this pixel, this screen at this pixel. So if you're interested in keying something as impossible as this for your own projects, let's say you're trying to get out of a jam or just in general, you want to know, you know, what the limits of green screen are, check out the course. It's on my Gumroad page. You can do secure checkout right from there. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something. I'm probably going to do some more tutorials up here. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment, leave me a like, do all that YouTube -y stuff. Otherwise, Otherwise, uh, I will see you on the next one. Thanks, guys. You ever wonder how Hollywood VFX Studios pulls such amazing chroma keys from such uneven green screen footage? Well, if you've ever tried to find the answer in online tutorials, you know just how frustrating it is to hear them all claim that it's impossible. After seven months of hard research, trial and error, I'm happy to tell you I've designed a comprehensive course that'll show you how to pull this key from this footage in a few hours with free software. I boiled everything I learned down into easy to follow 10 minute lessons covering the extraction process from start to finish, including camera and lighting tips and tricks, denoise techniques, using the free version of DaVinci Resolve for its awesome Delta Keyer, node-based compositing in general, which is not as scary as it sounds, I promise, and I bet you end up preferring it, using or generating clean plates to tell the keyer which shade of green to use at which pixel, even with moving cameras, generating detailed edge mats and inner core mats for the perfect alpha extraction, custom despill and edge smearing techniques to get balanced realistic colors, compositing tips, and so much more. There's over two and a half hours of material, plus you get the footage to follow along. And the beauty is once you know 
know how to do chroma key right, you can take on way more ambitious projects on tiny, tiny budgets. Plus, you'll find yourself using it to get out of all kinds of storytelling jams, because pickups and insert shots are so much easier once you know how to chroma key. So if you're ready to expand the scope of your filmmaker toolbox tenfold, click below for a secure checkout on my Gumroad page. For a limited time, I'm offering the course for just $99.